All right, welcome back for another video of Grant's Heating and Air. Today we're gonna to show an installation that we did the entire duct system. And this is gonna be another Daikin all electric system. We've done a video on that, but on this installation, we actually installed all the ductwork. This had electric baseboard heat only, and we were able to save the customer a lot of money by adding the heat pump, the forced air system. So we're gonna show you a little bit about that today. So this is our Daikin Fit air handler. This is of course going to be no gas, all electric system. And we have a backup heat kit that is located in this section of the air handler where we're going to supplement any of the heat that the heat pump cannot keep up with or if it gets too cold. This one is a 10 kW kit with a 60 amp breaker. We of course here again are using our nice five inch thick filters, lower our static pressure and allow the customer to have longer run times and better filtration. And I guess we can go through a little bit on the duct system. So we hung this from rubber isolators. This helps keep the sound from traveling up. This customer runs their fan all the time like I do at my house and just keep moving that air to keep it comfortable in the home. We like to take hard duct and flex and what we try to do is flex at the end of our runs so that we can quiet down the system. You can see there is some hard pipe here. This is a return going back into this direction. And then we put some flex in the middle of it. We keep that flex nice and tight, as you can see, and that lowers the resistance in that and just gives us really good flow. But by taking the metal out and putting the flex in, we can isolate a lot of the sound that travels through the metal. So we'll kind of show you around a little bit. This is called our Honeywell Bypass. Here we've got the three light indicators that tell, if it's, tell us if it's humidifying, if it needs service, or if the pad needs to be changed. So we like to use these advanced models. We don't use the less expensive ones. These ones have power dampers in here, as you may have seen in our other videos. And that allows us to not circulate air through this humidifier when it's not in use. Um, that's why we like love the power dampers because the customers don't have to worry about shutting these off manually. We like to run copper lines, not the included vinyl line that comes with these. A couple different reasons is that we don't really trust the vinyl for many years, um, so longevity. We like to go back to the copper lines. And if you actually have this hooked to the hot line, which is what we do, and it's too close to the water heater, it can actually melt the inside tubes in here because it's too hot and it causes this whole thing to leak. So by us running copper as well, it dissipates a little bit of that heat and keeps the internals from getting too hot. So here I want to show you that we put in a duct isolator here. You would typically see this on the square side of a plenum on the top when you have a vertical system or upflow, we call it. Um, but this isolates any movement. You can see that allows the air handler to move a little bit and also helps with sound traveling. But this is our return duct that we ran over here. This is actually one of the return ducts. You saw the one that we had. Yeah, and you can see this is our supply duct here that we ran. And here in Colorado, we seal all of our joints. So you can see all of the sections have been sealed with duct sealant. And you can see even that our headers are that way. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more on that. But see up here, you want to see if we can turn the light up here. You can see our supply. We run all of our supplies with the seams down so that we can properly seal everything, including the back of the top takeoff. Here we've got, you can see a little bit of flex running to a supply boot. So we like to, like I was saying, we like to have that flex at the end to keep things nice and quiet. This, we had to get real creative here too. We weren't able to move this box um, so we actually made a panning box inside which allowed the return to be up inside here and still be isolated from the electrical so that was a creative way for us to do that this is called thermal pan thermal pan is a cardboard okay now a lot of guys are going to say why would you put cardboard on your floors why would you do that well new construction it can be tough because during new construction, they don't always have things dried in. So water can come in and get to this and just destroy it, right? It's paper practically. But in this application, when the home was already built, we like to use thermal pan because it's quiet. Now, you, I know you can break your metal panning in the returns and that will keep the sound down, but you still get a little flex and a little bit of popping sounds. With 
this thermal pan, you don't get any sounds. No walking on the floor, no worrying about that. And as long as it doesn't get wet, when it's properly installed, as you can see up here, take a look, we actually use S-Lock to make it rigid. And then of course we're sealing everything to the floor. So we're able to create, you know, headers that are sealed. And these are very quiet. You don't have any noise. So that's why we liked doing that on this particular application. So let me show you something over here too. Here again, we're doing the last section of pipe, as you can see, is in flex to the boot. The last three feet is ideal. Not a lot of companies do that. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've seen any companies that have done that here in Colorado. But I want to show you, see we flex in this. And we also are trying to limit taking anything off the end of the ductwork. You need a minimum of a foot so that you can have the proper static pressure across the duct line. If you were to take a run right off this end cap, we call it, that just shoots all that pressure down the end of the duct. And you want to kind of pressurize the duct like a balloon. And in that balloon, you've got a bunch of little holes. And all those holes are the supply runs coming out. Well, if at the end of the balloon, you've got a big hole at the end, you can't get that nice pressure that creates even distribution across the house. So that's why we make sure we minimum one foot from an end cap. I bet a lot of you go look at your ductwork, you're gonna see runs that are right off the end cap or right at the end. Not good practice to have even flow across the house. And that's kind of one of those tricks of the trade um, is to keep that one foot minimum. So we do add a little heat to the crawl. We've got one on each side where the customer can open and close this. And it looks like it's currently pretty much closed. And we did actually recommend they get their whole perimeter of their crawl space insulated. And they did a very nice job of doing that. This really helps keep the load down, keeps the space warm. These are some custom fittings that we had done. And you can see here, there's a flex. So if that equipment's gonna move, there's, there's no vibration traveling through the ductwork. And it does look like the guys missed a little bit of duct sealant here, but you know, it's all in, a, in the envelope. This is a very small, minuscule amount of loss, but this should have been sealed. Um, but you can see we, we have what we call the pair of pants. I don't know if you can see up here how this angles out. And if you see here, there's some screws because we have turning vanes in here that are like little airplane blades that allow the air to turn and lowers the resistance, increasing the airflow, increasing the efficiency. And this one goes all the way to the end. And then of course, flex coming off of the last three feet of all of our runs, again, to keep everything nice and quiet. So every run you see has that flex at the end. Sorry, the lighting's really kind of bad down here. I look like a ghost. Ooh, <laughs> you know, like I might want to hand the light to Ayla. That's probably better. We just wanted to show you how we can add ductwork to an existing house and how we like to do it. And this being an all electric system, and this is a propane application. So we're saving the customer a lot of money here in Colorado because the propane is expensive compared to our electricity. And they absolutely love it. So um, they're actually on our website um, and gave us a, a good testimonial on this system. And we've been through them with two winners now, and they've been down to negative 20, negative 23, and have had no comfort issues at all. Kind of backtrack into another video we did, which was our all electric system. We actually got an email this morning that this customer of ours is saving over $250 a month in heating her home and she's more comfortable she's able to keep the temperatures higher and absolutely phenomenally impressed that it was operating at negative 23 and i think it, she said it lost two degrees on the thermostat but they had it set at 70 so held 68 during a negative 23 degree day and it was all electric and she's super thrilled on the savings that she's getting and that was from our original all electric video you guys can check out right here basically it's this system but we took out an old gas furnace, used the existing ductwork, and we went all electric. And in this application, we added all the ductwork and went all electric in a horizontal position. But I wanted to show you in this, this clear P-trap. We like to use these P-traps. I don't know if any of you have seen these, but they have pop tops for easy clean. We leave the customer a brush just in case, or the technician, whoever's doing the maintenance, in case this backs up with water. Now this is only gonna be in the cooling mode of this system. In the heating mode, all the water's outside at the heat pump. 
but in air conditioning mode we do have this coil condensating and so this is a nice big clean out where you can see if it's getting plugged up with algae and other junk and we don't like to use the ones where you just build them you know and you can't see anything um, so this is really nice you can run your brush this way you can run your brush that way and that way so these are really nice p-traps that we like to use so you can see we had a couple static pressure holes that we have cut in or drilled into the ductwork and this is so we can commission the equipment properly make sure the airflow is running properly because at the thermostat for the daikin one thermostat we can trim some of these we can go up and down a little bit with airflow but we try to design all the ductwork from the very get-go of course doing a load calculation and manual j manual d manual s manual j is your load manual d is your duct and manual s is your equipment selection and we like to st we start off with all of that by taking measurements of the home taking look at the windows taking the insulation taking air infiltration into um, that equation and everything so then we can come up with the proper sized equipment and then we then we build the ductwork with the duct calculator we figure out well how much how much ductwork do we need to handle the certain cfm of this home based on that load pretty neat to take a home that had no ductwork at all and make it super comfortable humidify it clean the air give them very comfortable heat pump heat because we're going to run that heat pump a lot a traditional gas furnace just comes on and off and on and off where a heat pump system will actually modulate down from the inverter compressor and come back up and give us long run times those long run times make it nice and comfortable without using a lot of power and, and costing a lot of money okay i want to show you our condensate pumps it's a little hard to see us down underneath here this is where we're, we're collecting all the water from the humidifier and from the cooling operation of this system going into a pump now if you see these yellow wires here that we've wired in that's our safety switch and it's actually going to go up into the air handler and what's nice about the Daikin air handlers is they have an alert terminal and that alert terminal allows us to just land those wires on the alert terminal and then the system will throw an alert up on the thermostat if the pump ever can't pump out the water and if you're signed up for the the cloud-based service through daikin one it actually will send an alert to me the dealer as well and we'll know right away there's an issue going on for water starts to pile up under here so i wanted to show you guys this red light i just really think this is cool so the lights up red when it's heating lights up blue when it's cooling and right now of course we're heating or up here in the winter time but i want to show you a little closer on this thermostat so the customer can move this in a circle to bring the temperature up or they can bring it down you can also physically push the ups and down arrows up and down arrows or you can actually grab it and move it up and down which is pretty neat too so then we've got the modes over here so we've got auto which heats and cools without you having to switch from cool to heat and then we have our emergency heat and our emergency heat allows us to override the heat pump and go to the auxiliary heat kit which will be the heat kit inside the air handler you can push down on this anytime bring you back to the home screen we've got our main hitters down here this is of course our home that we're at now we can see our schedule we can then do away mode if we want to set a high and low and we're leaving for vacation and we get some air information here on air quality tell us the filter is good what the current humidity is the current temperature what the outdoor is humidity and temperature weather and you can control some of the fans here one clean is like if you maybe burn something in the kitchen or something like that you can turn this on and it'll do three hours of fan time to clear the air in the home let's go back up here to this little three little bars there we get into the settings and here you can see those system modes we were looking at the schedule the away some of those are our heavy hitters that you saw below and then we have a display setting so let's say it's too bright maybe we want to use a large font maybe we don't like the light bar that i like down here and there's screen savers and some other things where we can lock it and clean it and then turn on night mode which you know if this was in an area where in your bedroom or you could see it at the end of the hall maybe you don't want that light and you can shut all that off reminders is nice for us to tell them when to do their filters their pads and they need service so we also can do date and time options in here set our wi-fi up set up the account we can look at air quality and humidity and some other things in the settings and some equipment and some support information so all that's really easy to use most of the time the customer is just right here at the main screen just either going up and down or turning the dial or setting their schedule that's really it and what's really neat about this is that if you have the app 
this is the exact same interface. It looks exactly the same on the app as it does here, so it's very familiar and easy to use from wherever you're at. This is the Dyke and Fit heat pump system we were talking about inside. This is the outdoor unit. We did have to get a little creative with the slope here, um, but we've had this system in for two years, no issues. Things have been settling nice. This has a pan heater in it that can handle the very cold temperature. So we have this one set up to negative 10 degrees before it turns off. So it's still giving us heat at negative 10. Anything below that, it's really not enough to warrant the electrical use. And that was based on what Daikin had told us to do for this particular unit. Very compact unit. I love the side discharge. It was just on, but we just missed it turning off. But we do want to show another outdoor I can feel it. heat pump. It's nice and tight fit here. Very quiet. I mean, the customers are never going to get bothered by the sound of this unit. So thanks for coming along with another adventure. I mean, I love it. HVAC's an adventure for us, but thanks for coming along with another one and letting us show you and introduce you to the Daikin all electric system here with the complete ductwork system that we did for the customer. Um, super exciting stuff. I, I just love taking this stuff and making it the best we can, the quietest systems we can, the most efficient systems that we can. And just hearing the customer's feedback makes it all worth it. So thanks for coming along and I hope to see you on the next video. Like and subscribe.